afternoon, everybody. Chris Grandy, back in my other office, Vianza Vineyard and Winery in Sonoma. Let me give you a little panorama just so you can see where I'm sitting. I'm in this little kind of box seat there. Over there's the main house. Over there's Route 12. And as you spin around, I get an image of the what I'm looking at, all the farmlands. We have water, which is great for them. They have their house, their meeting place, and then I'm just sitting, again, down in one of these little um, booths, which is a real nice seat. And anyway, a little bit of glare, I'm squinting a bit, sorry. But today's video, I'm gonna do a couple of videos today, two different topics. So this video is going to be on owning a foreign annuity. So surprisingly, this, is, this situation has come to me on more than one occasion where somebody owns an annuity with a foreign insurer. And I think this was pretty popular. Um, you, know, you go in waves of like, you know, the dollar is going to, you know, of thinking where the dollar is going to crash and it becomes very prominent. And um, <clears throat> I think about the same time that people got into gold really big in the 80s when they thought inflation was going to go, you know, forever. Um, at the same time, they bought, uh, people were at that time were buying annuities, especially like in places like Switzerland where you, just had a stable currency and good interest rates. Um, since then, Switzerland's totally just trying to keep up with the EU is totally blowing out their 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 status. I mean, their negative interest rates, etc. But um, but people have annuities in foreign denominated in foreign countries uh, currencies held by foreign insurers. And interestingly, because of some of the money laundering laws and things like that that have popped up over the last twenty years. And especially after, you know, in the last 10 years with the terrorism stuff, these companies don't want American clients anymore. It's too much paperwork to, um, to try to handle, just even just holding these clients. The disclosures they have to put due every year, just too much. So they want to get rid of them. And so they're kind of, you know, as these things mature or as people have held on to them for a while, they're, they're sending letters to the clients, hey, can you, know, can you basically, can, can, can you get out of here? We'd love to get rid of your account. We don't want to manage it anymore. We don't want to have to dis you know have to deal with the disclosures. And so uh, people who bought the annuity pretty easily back then with much easier banking laws, et cetera, are finding, okay, how do I get it back? And it's not that hard actually. You, you know, you find, a, obviously you don't want to get hit with taxes. So you want to do what's called a 1035 exchange, which is a few lines down from a 1031 exchange for those of you familiar with real estate. And it's similar, somewhat similar to an IRA rollover. You can take the money from one annuity and move it to another annuity directly with no tax consequence. It's a direct exchange. It's called, the, and it falls under the uh, IR, IRS code, IRC, Internal Revenue Code, Section 1035. And that's, that's why they call it a 1035 exchange. But basically you can roll over the annuity. And I wrote some articles about this. I'll put some links down below of, of they go, of articles I've already written on this topic and such, but you can just get an, a, a U.S. annuity company that's willing to receive the funds, and then have the um, have your foreign annuity company send the money to the U.S. Uh, we've done that a bunch of times. If somebody needs help with that, let me know. Whether we actually did it for you or just you just needed some advice about it, I'd be happy to help. Again, I do these videos. I expect people to call that, that need some help, and so uh, I'm open to it. So feel free to reach out to me if you need to. Uh, one way or the other but we've done this uh you know like i said on more than one occasion and it's just it's it's uh it's a lot of fun we get it done and um it's not that difficult but you just have to follow the paperwork and the biggest thing is be careful with the paperwork that they give you because it might cause you to cash out the annuity so just be careful about that 1035 exchange um doing it correctly to make sure that, that you don't get hit with the taxes especially for something you've owned for 30 years and has accumulated a lot of tax deferred interest Anyway, that's it for now. Uh, 1035 Exchanges. Get some more resources below. Check them out. If you, like the video, if you like this video, click like and subscribe if you want to get more information like this. In the meantime, have a great day. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.